We start on a tragic note. Scott Weiland, the former Stone Temple Pilots frontman, has died. His last known concert was here in Canada just days ago. Today in Entertainment City, we're looking back at his life and rock and roll legacy. I'm Veteran musician with a career that spanned three decades, Wyland died mid-tour in Minnesota. His band, The Wildabouts, was scheduled to perform there last night, but the show was cancelled. According to the group's Facebook page, Wyland's final concert was on a Toronto stage at Adelaide Hall Tuesday night. The venue is now paying tribute to the singer on Twitter. And rockers like Dave Navarro, Tommy Lee and Nikki Six are sharing their respects online. A post on Wyland's Instagram page says the singer died in his sleep. So far, no cause of death has been released, but the two-time Grammy winner had struggled with drug abuse for years. During a stop in T.O. last year, he told us those troubles were behind him. Um, past demons are past demons. Uh, that's stuff that I dealt with, you know, like 14 years ago. Those days of uh, my dope abuse and, and use are long since by me. It's been long since you Wyland's long struggle with drugs was a factor in his split with both the Stone Temple Pilots and Velvet Revolver, bands he fronted for years. Together, the groups sold a total of more than 44 million albums. The singer's most recent project, Scott Wyland and the Wildabouts, released the disc Blaster back in March, just a day after the band's guitarist died of an overdose. Wyland was 48. The Grammys are also remembering Wyland ahead of a musical tribute to a trailblazer for a different generation. The legacy of Old Blue Eyes will be honored with Sinatra 100, an all-star Grammy concert. Celine Dion, Carrie Underwood and John Legend are just a few of the performers taking part in the primetime special that's celebrating the late Frank Sinatra's 100th birthday. Catch the show Sunday night right here on City. We're so excited and honored and thrilled to be uh, playing the halftime show. It's going to be wonderful and I hope we'll see you there. A touchdown for Coldplay. The Brit Band will be headlining Super Bowl 50's halftime show when the NFL's biggest game comes to Santa Clara, California, February 7th. Banks have conditioned us to trust them. He brought us comedies like Anchorman, Talladega Nights, and Step Brothers. Now Adam McKay is going in a much different direction with The Big Short. The star-studded drama is based on the real-life financial crisis of less than a decade ago. Our Terry Hart sat down with the director. Bale, Carell, Gosling, Pitt. We did get a crazy cast, didn't we? How close did we come to absolute financial ruin? We came so much closer than anyone knows. We've just always been told, just trust the experts, trust the experts. And I think really the, the main thrust of this movie is to bridge that gap. The Big Short opens December 23rd. And tomorrow, catch one of the film's stars, Ryan Gosling, on Saturday Night Live. Ryan and AD kiss passionately for remainder of promo. Ugh. Pamela Anderson is making history by posing in the buff in Playboy's final nude issue. This marks the 14th time the BC native has appeared on the cover of the Meg, a Playboy record. Her first cover was back in 1989. Earlier this year, Playboy announced it was changing direction, going PG-13 in an effort to increase its readership. The final nude issue hit stands December 11th. Remember to get your entertainment news first right here in the morning and anytime on Twitter at NCity.